Hello again. Uh, tonight we will be speaking about some example of the application of the Lagrangian mechanics for the description of the dynamics of the multi-degree of Hidon system. I mean, today <coughs> we will take into account, we will consider dynamics of simple multi multi degree of freedom system okay i mean using the lagrangian mechanic uh, mechanics approach we will find the governing equation of such an element i mean it will be the trolley connected with the obstacle by the uh, by the spring with the stiffness k with the mass m1 and connected with the another trolley which will be given by the mass 2 and the elements which connects it will be the damper with the uh, with the damping factor c and the spring with the stiffness coefficient k okay and we remember that the first step of the Lagrangian mechanics method was connected with the number of degrees of freedom we see that for that case the number of uh, degree of freedom typically called by s is 2 because here we have two elements with the masses okay second step we have to introduce some coordinate frames i will do that in that form i mean it will be the x1 it will be the x2 i mean with the coordinates with the same facings i mean q1 is a x1 q2 it's a x2 and the, the and the generalized velocity will be given by the x1 dot and q2 dot it will be x2 dot such a thing second step we remember that it's to state the lagrange euler equations and in our case it will be dl over dx1 dot minus dl times dx1 and plus d over dx1 dot equals generalized forces of due to the x1 but of the every known potential force that is why i will put that that uh, that script here okay and the sec for the second uh, generalized coordinate we have such a thing i mean exactly the same but with the second coordinate plus we remember that that thing can be here or here does not matter okay and the same thing okay in our case we see that the generalized forces are exactly equal zero because we don't have any external acting on our system okay it means in our case it the thing will be zero it means that we have to find what is the l for the entire system important thing we have to find the lagrangian of the entire system not on some parts of the system and it will be the sum of the kinetic energy of the both trolleys minus the potential energies of the connectors i mean it will be the potential energy of the first connector elastic connector and the potential energy of the second elastic uh, uh -huh, okay okay you have to improve myself and it we have to take it uh, into parentheses because it's a one part because it's a po entire potential energy of the system okay and what we have more we have to compute that expression and in our case it will be for the first place 1 over 2 mass x1 dot square plus 1 over 2 mass 2x dot square and minus 
the potential energy of the first connector, we see that it will be given by the first displacement. Due to the simple computation, it will be the 1 over 2 times k times u1, I mean the deflection of the first spring, and in our case, in the moment we'll compute what is the value, the second connector will be given by the, sorry, that time it will be 2k, because the stiffness of the second connector is 2k, okay, and times u2 as a deflection of the second spring. And Based on our previous materials, we are able to figure out that this, this deflection of the first spring will be given exactly by the x1, but the deflection of the second spring, it will be, I mean u2, it will be the difference between the x1, x2 minus x1. You can check it on our previous videos. Okay, and next step what we have to do as a next step in the next step we have to find the particular values of the energies because that form of the Lagrangian, Lagrangian is quite easy i will be able to take that whole expression i mean the partial derivative respected with the x1 and at the same time i will find the value of the time derivative uh, it means that we have to compute such a thing and due to that differentiation, here we have the m1 times x1 dot. You can check that if we take that derivative, you will get that generalized momentum. And the next step, we will get inertia force. If we are talking about the second component, there will be such a thing. I mean, again, under the sign of the time derivative, we will get m2 x2 dot, I mean the generalized momentum, and as a result, you will have the m2, oh, I made a mistake, look, I forgot about the m1, of course, x2 double dot, okay? It means that we deal with, with the first part of our lagrange schroeder equation, now we have to deal with that thing, okay? And I mean dl over dx1 in our case will be connected only with the part of the, with the, part of the elastic components, I mean we will get as a result because we see that that thing does not depend, that thing does not depend of the x1, x2, it means that here we have get minus k x1 from that part and minus k x2 minus x1 times uh, sorry it will be of course plus but there will be internal derivative due to the differentiation of that thing which is under the uh, under the square, I mean from that component. Here we have such a thing. And next step it will be the derivative due to the x2 and we see there will be of course uh, there will be the, of course the minus due to that minus. That thing cannot be taken into account because it doesn't depend on the x2. There will be the only influence of that component we will get the thing from that here, that place, it will be the 2k x2 minus x1 and it will be internal derivative exactly equal 1 and the 2k as a stiffness of the second component. Okay, let's check the results. Oh, look, the stiffness of the second component is that thing. I mean, maybe I will use the different color to emphasize the mistake. Okay, and the last step, we have to compute the elements connected with partial derivative of d respected with the x1 and xt. d 
for our problem it will be 1 over 2 times c times the velocity of the deflection square of our damper in that case it will be exactly like in the case of the deflection of the spring I mean it will be x2 dot minus x1 dot squared something like that okay and now we have to compute that part over dx1 and in that case we see that will be again c times x dot 2 minus x1 dot and there will be internal derivative equals minus 1 if we are talking about the second component here we have such a thing it's c times x2 dot minus x1 dot times exactly 1 because it will be internal derivative of that polynomial function okay and in the last step we are able to put everything together and we will get the equation of motions okay i mean from that place here we have the inertia force from that place for the first generous coordinate here we have the damping force i mean it's a minus c x2 dot minus x1 dot from that place here we have the forces connected with the uh, with the elastic components elastic connectors and look important thing here we have the minus but in our equation he also have the minus here it means that the minus and the minus will give us the positive number i mean it's a k times x1 and i have to check what we'll have here i mean there will be the minus 2k x2 minus x1 equals 0 because generalized coordinate for the x1 was 0 and from the other hand the inertia force is in that formula from that place here we see that we have exactly the same term but with the positive sine minus x1 dot and exactly the same if we are talking about the elastic component but with the positive number that sign will be reduced by the sign from the dl over dx2 i mean here we have the plus 2 k x2 minus x1 equals zero okay and using lagrangian mechanic as you see we are able to find two governing equation i mean the system of the governing equation which describes the dynamics of the entire system and during the process of solving of that equation we are able to find the solution uh, of that things and we are able to describe the how uh, the motion of our system will look like thank you for attention see you next time on another video